Hi, Charlie. Thanks very much. And um, good morning to everyone or good evening. As I hear, Singapore is one of the top three uh, cities tuning into COGEX. So um, I'm going to talk for uh, 10, 15 minutes and then introduce um, Georgia Gould from Camden Council, the leader of Camden Council. Um, I wanted to just uh, start off um, given that uh, last week, this time was Black Tuesday, uh, just to uh, recognize and mark the fact that, you know, one week on, um, it is absolutely critical uh, that we continue to acknowledge, learn, make commitments and be held accountable to the actions that we take as organizations. Uh, our organization, you know, held a, a blackout uh, last uh, Tuesday on June the 3rd. And, you know, we would welcome anyone who wants to join us. Uh, those are the, the dates uh, where we are going to be blacking out uh, over the uh, initially the next two years. Uh, and I think, you know, given that we're talking about uh, communities and neighborhoods today, it's important to, to mark uh, this Tuesday uh, as we did last Tuesday. Um, so, um, this is where we're all meant to be right now. Uh, this is Summers Town. Um, it's uh, the area in, in King's Cross where last year COGX was held and next year COGX will be held. But you know, just to give people uh, this location, this is where we are right now. And I, I, for the next 15, 20 minutes, for the next hour, I'd like to sort of indulge, indulge me and, and, and be here with us. Um, this has been another banner year for technology. These figures are a little bit out of date, but you know they tell the story really that tech has conquered the world. Seven out of the 10 largest companies in the world, uh, technology companies, and actually those seven out of 10 tech companies didn't exist um, 30, 40 years ago. Um, and when you look at it, actually tech seems to be impervious even to the worst economic crises you know, if you look at uh, this massive um, uh, uh, reduction in the stock market, this was obviously around 9-11 and the bubble bursting. This was the financial crisis. This is Corona. And, you know, NASDAQ is already above, uh, you know, uh, uh, historic uh, levels. Um, we have people in the tech community like Sir Michael Moritz uh, really talking about how this time, the corona uh, virus has sort of catapulted us into a future uh, where digital and technology is really sort of now become fundamental to the way we live. We see Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Donald Trump, and Facebook staff, you know, wrestling with some of the issues that technology brings. Um, but I just want to bring it back down to where we actually are. So this is Summerstown. Um, this is uh, the area that uh, COGX is held in. And this neighborhood, Somerstown, is one of the oldest neighborhoods um, in, in London uh, and, and one of the uh, lowest income neighborhoods in London. And I just want to kind of put the, the question out there. You know, it's 2020. Uh, how good is our vision? You know, we can see... Uh, so much nowadays, and we have the ability to see so much. But, you know, when you look about at, at what vision is actually about, it's also about peripheral awareness. It's about being able to focus. And it's also about color vision as well. And I think, you know, what's really important is to sort of think a little bit beyond. So one big context setter for us in London is that, you know, we're in the middle of a 2000 year shift where the economic center of London is going from the city of London, and this is London Wall from two, uh, 200 AD, I think. Uh, and this is now the new economic center of London, uh, based in Camden, which uh, where Georgia is the, the council leader. Uh, and this is the area where COGEX is. Um, you know, it's a rapidly evolving neighborhood. Just to give you a sense of the neighborhoods, this area is uh, the historic area of Somers Town, sandwiched between Euston Station, King's Cross, and St Pancras. 
And all of these new residents have moved in or are in the process of moving in Facebook, Google, uh, DeepMind, Nike, et cetera. So it's a neighborhood that you know, has hundreds of years of history, uh, predominantly in this area uh, between the train stations, but it's rapidly evolving. And some of the big challenges in Camden, uh, uh, or specifically in Summerstown, which Georgia can talk about more later, are, you know, this is a growing population, but this is a, a population that struggles economically. 50% of children in Summerstown live in, in poverty. 24% uh, of Summerstown residents have no qualifications, which is double the average in Camden. Um, only 30% uh, of adults say they eat healthily. Um, and if you look at social care, seven out of 10 kids in Somerstown are on the social care system. And this is uh, just, I'll take you a quick walk through the neighborhood. This is Little Village, which is an amazing charity, uh, you know, that works to, to recycle, um, you know, um, resources for for young families who've just had kids um, and this is based in a community center in Somerstown and this is the new Google uh, building. This is the uh, choir from Maria Fidelis which is one of the secondary schools in Somerstown um, and this is the Crick Institute in Somerstown, which is one of the largest genomics research centers in the world. This is uh, the New Horizon Youth Center that uh, provides advice and resources for uh, young people who are unemployed, who are homeless, who've come off uh, the streets, who come from cities all around the UK uh, and land up uh, walking out of the train stations and coming to Somerstown. Uh, this is a uh, universal music group, uh, which has recently moved in to Somerstown. Uh, this is the Story Garden, uh, which is an amazing new community resource that's been built uh, on land between the British Library and the Crick Institute uh, in partnership with Central St. Martins uh, and the University of the Arts, which is, you know, one of the largest uh, creative and design schools in the world, which is based in Somers Town and right next to where those of you who came to COGX last year, uh, the festival was. So at the bottom line is, you know, and, and this is a, a, a quote from a famous Somers Town resident, Charles Dickens, um, you know, Somers Town, like many of our cities, like many of our neighborhoods, like the world, is a tale of two cities. And you have one city in Somerstown in blue, uh, which is the old neighborhood where Charles Dickens lived, where Mary Wollstonecroft lived. Um, and then you have the other side uh, of Somerstown, which now is uh, you know, this amazing development where Google and Facebook and Universal Music are. So, you know, one of the things I think is really critical and um, is, is sort of fundamental to the way we think is that we need to rethink our, our relationship to place and we need to rethink our relationship to our neighborhoods. You know, we've seen in the last 15 years, uh, first with Occupy Wall Street, you know, with Brexit here in the UK, uh, with the climate crisis, uh, with uh, trade wars uh, happening between the US and China, obviously most recently with uh, the coronavirus, uh, and in the last few weeks with the, 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 the tragic um, um, murder of George Floyd um, and um, all the protests around Black Lives Matter, that you know, we're living in, in a world where um, people are, are dealing with with inequality, they're dealing with separation. And, you know, one of the things that we are trying to think about in this neighborhood, uh, this neighborhood where, you know, one of the lowest income neighborhoods in London uh, is cheek by jowl with, um, you know, these incredible uh, new uh, developments um, that are happening in King's Cross 
and are going to be happening in in uh, in in Houston is you know what possibilities do we have in this neighborhood to sort of create a new vision for what technology can bring uh, to society in the next 20 years and we do think that you know there is amazing potential in this neighborhood uh, a four hour train ride from Somers Town uh, is a in an area of 41 million people, 150 unicorns, 130 billion of annual IT spend. We think some of the biggest industries uh, of the future are going to be reimagined in the cities, you know, within this new Palo Alto, Paris, London, Leeds, Birmingham, Amsterdam. You know, we see how strong. Uh, all of these cities are in some of the most strategic new technologies of the future. Obviously, AI, space, mixed reality, genomics, neuroscience. And I guess, you know, we feel very confident that over the next 20 years, while uh, Palo Alto is ahead currently in terms of experience, the unicorns, the talent that works there, the potential and the markets of this new Palo Alto, uh, the universities, the cities, you know, the access to government and global markets can create a new type of ecosystem. And one of the things I love people to think about uh, is, you know, what makes a great ecosystem? In white here are the elements that have been very prevalent in Silicon Valley. You know, when you think about proximity, you can't actually walk or cycle anywhere in, Silic in Silicon Valley. You have to drive or you have to fly to get to another ecosystem. Alignment is not a question in Silicon Valley. It's, you know, uh, it's all about, you know, taking a contrarian view. Uh, the focus is on exits. It's less on ethics. The ambition is if it works for me, it'll work for everyone. The adoption is, you know, companies working on global problems from suburbs, not from cities. But at the end of the day, you know, we look at Silicon Valley and it has created these, you know, multi-billion dollar, in fact, now three trillion dollar businesses. So I think, you know, we have the ability to ask ourselves this question. And, you know, we've got this potential, we believe, on our doorstep, you know, even here between uh, the oldest social housing in London. Uh, this is uh, Chamberlain House. You know, literally 10 yards across this road is uh, the future of healthcare and genomics, uh, the future of AI at the Turing Institute and, and the Magna Carta and all of the knowledge in, in this country. And we sort of boil this down to this one road. If you look at the right side of this road, you see one version of opportunity. If you look at the other side of this road, this is the Crick Institute and, uh, and the British Library, you look at another version. And we sort of frame this internally as the Osselston Street opportunity. Osselston Street is this road. And how can we work with uh, our insights, our access, our community, our network, uh, and work with the council to identify opportunities that can really just help people in the next 20 years walk across that road. Um, as I said, you know, I think um, the Blackout Tuesdays is a very, very timely reminder to all of us that inequality, you know, exists, you know, very fundamentally in, in our society. And from that point of view, I think, you know, while we talk a lot about technology, uh, the hardest thing to change is mindsets. And for us to really move forward here, I think that is a huge part of what we need to do. Um, I'm going to leave this um, screen up for a couple of seconds, minutes, sorry. <laughs> Uh, if you want to, you can vote uh, what you think the key components are of a great ecosystem. It's bit.ly slash new Palo Alto. Uh, and now I'm going to introduce um, Georgia Gould. Um, and Georgia is, um, you know, someone I've known for a while. Um, we're very lucky to, to 
be part of her council. I've been a, a resident in her council um, personally and now, you know, uh, in our space opposite uh, the Crick Institute in Somerstown, we are tenants. Uh, of Georgia and Camden Council. And, you know, the thing that really excites us about being at Camden is not just all of the opportunities in Camden, but the leadership in Camden and, and Georgia. And um, Georgia, maybe you can talk a little bit about this, has an incredible vision for uh, inclusive capitalism, I think, or how really, you know, business can work in a constructive way with the community. Uh, and as you can see, Camden has uh, amazing opportunities there. So um, I'll just remind people if they want to vote, we can show some of the results later. It's uh, bit.ly slash new Palo Alto, but maybe we can uh, bring the presentation down now and and Georgia, uh, you know, love to hear from you about your thoughts on, on the neighborhood and specifically what business and what tech companies can do to make a positive contribution. Thanks all, um, and, and thanks for your kind of passion and, um, and commitment to, to Camden. It's brilliant to, to have you as, as part of our community and, and really exemplifying, I think, through Local Globe, what being a, a good neighbor means as a, as a tech company. I think as you outlined, you know, we we're, there's hugely exciting growth in Camden and we have a cluster of you know world leading um institutions both um those who've been in camden for a long time like the british library and the british museum and now increasingly um leading companies in biomedical sciences technology the creative industries and i think what's really exciting around around the kind of king's cross neighborhood is the way that creativity technology biomedical science is is coming together and the fusions between um uh, those different industries and sectors and the creativity that's that's generating so so that there's huge opportunity there but um when when many of our residents look at what's happening you know they their big fear is 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 being the new palo alto because they see the the inequality that has that has grown and the way that um the communities that were there for a long time um that were living in poverty have, have been pushed away and i think that you know, our big challenge is to um, make sure that all that growth and innovation that's happening on our doorstep really meaningfully changes lives um, for, for residents that face long term uh, deprivation um, in our community. But also that we don't kind of characterize all the creativity and innovation as sitting within those companies, but actually recognizing the kind of agency and power um, within our within our communities. And so we, you know, we've been on a journey over the the last few years to to try and adjust that from our steam commission that brings together some of the companies you talked about to offer real opportunities for young people to to gain fusion skills and to 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 make sure that those kind of amazing buildings you you had photos of are, are places that they know that they feel comfortable in that they can that they can um uh, aspire to to create in um but there are still huge barriers and you know the the statistics you shared you know 10 year lower life expectancy in Somerstown um to to Hampstead um still exist and so i think we do need to to see a more fundamental change and and it it has to go beyond csr to really solving challenges um together our communities and those companies um you know just um uh, on the doorstep of all those companies, we've got a primary school that, through this crisis, we found that 65% of of children didn't have access to digital tools to learn at home, and that's two minutes from Facebook and Google, and that's just not acceptable. And I think we we have to to really make sure that in terms of housing, employment, digital access, that living living so close to to opportunity means real change in people's lives. And and how. I mean, how do you suggest, because, you know, this is a this is an amazing forum in terms of technology companies, technology, uh, uh, people working in technology. And I think a lot of people sort of ask themselves the question, you know, what can I do? There is a lot of willingness uh, within this community. So, you know, if there were one or two things you could suggest to people they could do, not just in Camden and in London, because I know you do a lot of work at the London level as well as at, at the Camden level, 
but as people go back to their communities, what are the sort of the two or three things that people could practically do? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, you um, as a sector um, have huge power in terms of who you employ and really, you know, um, investing in training that brings people into the workforce, that, that bring diverse perspectives. And, you know, there's there's a lot that, that organisations can do through schools. And, you know, we, we have a STEAM commission in Camden, but there are different examples across London, which is, you know, getting involved in um, shaping curriculum and uh, work experience. But I think fundamentally to kind of make that change it's to create good quality paid um, paid jobs for young people. And, you know, so, some of the things that we're working with around youth safety in Camden is, is six month um, uh, paid work experience for young people who've um, been through the criminal justice system or who are at risk of going into it, um, who have huge, um, o- often, you know, huge creativity, so much to give. But um, what, what we find is people aren't willing to take a chance on them, but a lot of their aspiration um, and the tools they use are technology tools, um, YouTube and um, uh, and and other social media is 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 kind of the language that they communicate through. So I think giving um, to really taking the risk of employing young people from diverse perspectives and and recognizing the kind of trauma that those young people have gone through and the support they need to to kind of thrive in in, um, in employment, I think makes a huge difference. And then I think the second thing would be taking some of the big challenges we face um, and working on alongside communities to solve it. So, you know, whether it's the climate crisis or um, or youth safety, there's there's a contribution that, that companies can make to those to those challenges. But I think they can only make it if they if they work alongside those who who have um, that that lived experience, and we've we've gone through that journey um, well with with our companies. But you know, Saul, you've really done that um, in the work you've done as a neighbour. You've taken the time to kind of learn from our community and find out what the issues are, um, and help solve and help solve um, those issues alongside them. And how I mean, how do you think uh, of that from a from a you know a business or the perspective of someone who's who's working in a tech company not and you know um not all councils are like camden not all council leaders are like you a lot of people i think would say i'm not even sure how to identify local council leadership or work with my local council how do you recommend you know people engage with these with these big challenges um you know is it through councils is it through social enterprises is it through charities i mean maybe it's all of the above but you know how do you make councils more accountable and accessible yeah i mean i think anyone can be an anchor and a leader in a community so you know um councils have convening power but so do tech companies and i think that you know that if if you you know take any of the challenges I talk about, there will be community organisations that already exist trying to to solve those challenges, and they'll be doing so without real probably tech knowledge or understanding, and without a huge amount of capacity or funding. And so you know you can find those partners in your local community. Um, uh, I, I mean, I think that that most um, councils in London now have some kind of inclusive economy team that are trying to do this work. You know, this you know we're desperately underfunded. Um, Camden itself has kind of lost half its its budget, but there is that you know there are there are partners. Um, I think if if there is a kind of willingness to address these challenges, and and I think that there's a there's a kind of a business interest in in doing it because I think we we make um, you know we know that creativity comes from diversity, comes from different ideas and people who think out the box. Um, and you only get that if you really embrace the diversity that that sits within our communities. So everything that people love about King's Cross, its creativity, its um, vibrancy, comes from the diversity of our communities. So we have to be so careful that as we as we kind of grow as a community and as we um, uh, you know bring in all these new companies, we don't lose what what makes us special and actually lose the creativity that everyone's um, that's attracted everyone in the first place. And could you, I mean, maybe I, I know we're going to close up in, in two or three minutes, but then we'll have time for a Q&A. Can you just give us like, you know, a minute or so on what it was like to be a council leader 
you know, going through COVID? Yeah, I think that COVID has challenged our community and the council on a scale we've never seen before. We had to step up new services practically overnight, 100,000 meals delivered in Camden, uh, just as an example. But I think it it actually led to um, a, a pace of movement and a level of partnership, whether it's with um, business, voluntary sector or communities who stepped up through mutual aid that we've never seen before. And I think it's definitely challenged my view of what's possible because it was possible to completely transform services you know within two weeks and i think as we look to the future and what we talk about in camden as as renewal i think we now need to ask the big questions about how we how we actually build that inclusive uh, economy that has people and, and planet at its, at its heart and challenges racial injustice and you know i think what we did at pace over covid um shows what's possible if we can kind of imagine it and and dare to do it yeah, I mean, it's. I think the innovation that has happened uh, across all areas of, uh, or, of of the public sector in the last six weeks has has been pretty amazing, and I think hopefully has shown that you know the public sector is open to and recognizes the role that technology can play in in, in sort of addressing uh, you know big big issues, but. Um, Thanks, uh, Georgia, for 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 your your perspective. I'll just remind people if they do want to vote on what they think makes a great ecosystem, go to bit.ly uh, backslash New Palo Alto. Um, but um, we're going to wrap up um, now, and uh, I think Charlie's going to join us, and then we're going to go to to Q and A. So, thanks a lot, Georgia. Thank you, Sol, and thank you, Georgia. That was a really interesting conversation. Obviously, COGEX is normally, as you mentioned, in King's Cross, and we feel like that we're there in spirit this year, but not there physically, and we look forward to coming back next year. Uh, but thank you for that uh, fantastic session and lots and lots of um, meaningful actions that we can all get involved in and take. So um, I'm going to close up the session now, and we look forward to seeing you back on the leadership stage for the next one shortly. Want access to more COGX videos? Subscribe now for free at cogx.co.